Hey everyone, today we're going to be exploring the creation of portraits in Midjourney. We'll be taking a step-by-step -step approach in bringing characters to life. If you're new and want to get started, be sure to check out my introduction video in the description. Let's get started. So I personally always struggle to creating portraits on Midjourney. Not knowing where to start was the biggest issue. I didn't know how to describe a character. I didn't know how to create a character. It's in my head, but I didn't know how to translate it into words. There's just so many words to filter through. Um, I found the easiest way for me is to start with the subject, I'll go into the style, and then finally just um, fine tuning the details in terms of the imagery at the end that will get me a good portrait. Um, the subject is essentially who is my main character. Now that could be anyone or anything, you know, it could be your dog, an alien, um, mermaid, or like a dragon here. You know, there's so many uh, ways that you can go rather than just portrait man, portrait woman. Of course, that is actually the easiest way to start as well. After you have a subject, moving to the feature specifically is the core of your character, right? You, you're not too particular, but you want to get the right features. So let's say you have your, of course, your gender, your age, your race, ethnicity, facial features, and then hair. Um, and then you just add more details to it, like the hairstyle, hair color, eye color, um, different shapes of your eyes and nose. There's a lot of details but as long as you can pick a few to start off with you'll see that mid journey start creating more for you you know like one person may have freckles and one person may have like darker thick eyebrows and then you you come to find that you don't like those eyebrows you can request to get something else um, and that's a good way to start now you don't have to be super detailed at this stage However, it is a good setup so you can learn what you like and what you don't like. In this example, we have imagine, portrait young woman, pale skin, wide nose, crescent eyes, pouty lips, pink hair. So just going down the list here, we have your gender, age, race, ethnicity, uh, or like skin tone, facial features. Uh, hair and then you can always add a color to that and a little bit more detail if you like so if you like pink hair that's fine um, but if you want pink long hair pink short hair uh, pixie cut all of that can be added in at this stage as well as it's generating here i just want to say one of my favorite places to study hair is actually on pinterest there's lots of hairstyles haircuts and if i don't know how to describe something Pinterest will have uh, lots of boards ready. So if you're looking for short hair, there's so many different styles that you can go and get inspiration from. Um, so here you can see, we didn't really give her an eye color. So there's a mix of eye colors here. There's green, more of like the brown, grayish sort of tone and like another green. Um, her lips are like pouty, that's fine. And then pink hair, um, she kind of has like a pink eyebrow as well. So learning from that, you can see there's freckles. You can add even more. Like she has pretty wavy hair here, but if I want her to have braids, I would just simply add that to my prompt and try again. So I do like these looks, but let's just have another try and see. So I just paste that in. I'm going to give her pink hair, long side braid and then we didn't give her um eye like a colored eye so let's do crescent brown eyes and then that should be enough so these aren't perfect but they do have the braids at least on all of them um she has mixed two tone here here not exactly what i'm looking for same with this what actually happened is because of the word uh, brown in the eyes, I think they started taking that in instead, and that's okay. So all of this is a learning experience. You're just going to go through trial and error and see what you like and what you don't like. So I do like this braid here. It's like a, a type of braid as well. You can also use pinches. This might be like a fishtail. Um, I like the hair up top, so maybe we can add bangs. We can add maybe some blush or makeup if we can. Um, 
and then you can start seeing more details that we can add. So right now I'm just going to generate one more time and then we can continue to move on to the next step. So I really like this hairstyle here. There's a braid on top. There's some bangs and some pigtails. My prompt for this one was portrait young woman, pale skin, wide nose. Changed it to almond eyes just to see if we get something different. Um, brown eyes, rosy pouty lips, pink hair, one long pigtail braid, um, and front bangs. And that's okay. We got we got what we asked for and I do like this one. So I'm going to upscale it. After giving your character like a face, you start putting more character development into it. I find that that gives me a lot of m more detail and character to my portraits. Um, I'm always asking who, what, when, where, and why. You know, do they have a job? What do they like to do? What are they doing? Um, clothing wise, you know, like, are they wearing something? Are they a doctor? Are they a smart cat? Um, when is the time period? Is it in the thirties? Is it in the nineties? Where, you know, of course, at home, outside, on a grass field, at a golf course, uh, so many locations that you can add and it changes the, the scene that, um, immediately. Um, lastly is the emotions. Is your character happy, sad? You know, are they going through a lot of things that just makes it a little bit different rather than just having a uh, picture of someone, just their face emotionless. You know, they could be smiling, a bright smile, a little smirk. The list just goes on and on. All right, so we gave this picture some love and now we're going to move into building her character. Now, what's her background? And essentially adding things that we might want. I can't believe we got here, but we essentially gave her a role of being a student in a coffee shop uh, who is really stressed out and studying for her test. So building this out compared to before where it's just a regular portrait, we're able to tell a story. And this is exactly what we wanted. As you can see here, my prompt for this one is portrait young woman in a coffee shop, pale skin, white nose, almond eyes, brown eyes. Uh, rosy potty lips, pink hair, one long pigtails braid, uh, front bangs, student studying for tests and is stressed. So a mouthful, but I'm going to upscale this photo and then move on to our stylized portrait. Here we have an example of an anime character. Uh, you can be as artistic as you can. Different art uh, expressions, oil painting, watercolor, uh, you can even do a drawing. There's so many ways that you can take. And if you really look into pop culture, there's even more, you know, movie inspired, Pixar, Marvel, um, Matrix. It's just a lot of different themes that's out there that's already existed. And you can just go ahead and use that for your first inspiration. Uh, if not, then just be playful and have some fun. You could also put it into a video game. Um, this one is ending up being a 90s cartoon uh, portrait. That's all I added to this image here. And as you can see, it's starting to come up and look a little bit scary since it's not ready. I do think these look pretty cool. You know, you still have your pink hair, this retro feeling. Um, they actually gave her glasses here, but she, all of them look really stressed for their test, right? Um... There's no braids, but this one does have that hair, like that uh, pigtail hair. So that's that's still pretty good. I wouldn't actually pick any of these, but um, I'm going to go back and have some more tries. What I tried here is adding Disney Pixar Princess to the front. And yeah, this one actually paints it perfectly. <laughs> so I'm going to roll with this one and move on to our next step. I do want to add that the hands on this is actually pretty good. You have all your fingers and even a thumb, a uh, long thumb, but you know what? I'm going to take this win. I think that's why I automatically chose this. Uh, usually you get like four fingers or six fingers and it's a little bit scary. Um, so in this image here, I was able to add a spotlight on her face. So then her face is more brighter. Um, they did add a light in front of her and 
This one is kind of really scared at whatever test that they're going to take. Uh, this one's angry. This one's just thinking about something else. And she's just has different eye colors again. I'm not sure what's going on, but lastly, we get to look at the imagery. Um, here is where you play with your resolution. Do you want it to be high quality? Do you want it to be just a little more realistic? Um, you can ask for the ratio to change a little bit here. So let's say you don't want it to be a square. It can actually be like a, a more of a longer image, like a portrait. Um, then you get your lighting. You can see here in this example, her face is like lit up on the side. It's very fiery and it matches her hair well. So that's just essentially all the things that we have here. For this final one, we are changing it up a bit. We're going to go back to hyper-realistic portrait, um, ambient lighting, and spot on her face. We're going to make this HD as well and see if that will give me a... A more photorealistic photo similar to what we started with like up here wow these are actually pretty good this first one here looks like an actual closer to a photo and then these other ones there you can see the spotlight being added to the side um, we did lose a braid here but the hair is maybe she just got rid of her braids um, this one is close, similar or the closest to our original image. I think the base is just to the side. But yeah, this I hope that this has helped you in your journey to create a portrait. I know this is really simple and simplified, but uh, I do have a tip that I do recommend is to go into the Mid Journey channels and browse around. One of my favorite channels, of course, is the characters, and you get to see a lot of different. Um, things that people try, you know, you get to think more about like if there's other accessories, like if your character has armor, your character has a nice fancy hat. Um, you can even shift to different perspectives in terms of zoom out a little bit, um, have them look at something. You can also uh, just search up the word portrait up top and then you'll be able to see all the portraits that people create. Um, by doing that, you're kind of getting like a crash course on things that you can use and learn from everybody else. So uh, thank you for watching.